All right, give it up for all the mamas in the room today. This day is all about you. <laughs> Whether you've been a mom for 60 years or for six days, or maybe you're a spiritual mama to those around you, today we honor you and we love you. So let's give it up one more time all over this room, at our south side and at our west side and online today. We love you. We honor all the special ladies in our lives today. You can go ahead and have a seat if you haven't already found it. <laughs> it is truly my joy and my privilege and my honor to come before you and share the word of God today. This is not something that I take lightly. It's not something that I take for granted. I don't know how my husband does it every single Sunday. I am a nervous wreck and like about to pass out, but Jesus is able and we're going to get through this. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can we give it up for our pastor today? What an incredible man of God we have to follow. Um, but as I was preparing this word, I kept reflecting over this past year of my life. It's been a minute since I've been up here on this side of the podium. <laughs> and um, I couldn't help but think this time last year, the Lord inspired me with a word to get battle ready. Do y'all remember that? <laughs> get battle ready. But little did I know that I was going to be the first one signed up to go to the war <laughs> this year. Can I just be real with you for a minute? It's been a year. I feel like it's been a year full of Mondays. <laughs> we all know how dreaded those Monday mornings are. And I feel like this has been a year full of them. We have faced loss and heartache, struggles and trials, legal battles, family issues, very hard situations that have brought me to my knees <laughs> more than one time. We've grieved the loss of children with friends that are near and dear to us. It's been a year, it's been a year. And I don't know if that's anybody here in the room that maybe that just speaks to your heart. Maybe today, just because it is the very day of honoring moms, maybe it breaks your heart. Maybe today in and of itself is a trial, is a struggle for you to get out of bed because maybe you're sitting in this room and you've struggled for years with infertility and you have yet to conceive a child of your own. Maybe today, this day brings back memories, painful memories of a childhood that you don't want to relive because you were not in good relationship with your own mother. Maybe today you're grieving the loss of your mother here on the earth. Maybe today is the trial that you're facing. But I'm here to tell you that the word of God says that though we may face troubles on every side, we are not crushed. We may be perplexed, but we are not in despair. Are you listening to me, church? We may be persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We may be struck down, but we are not destroyed. We can rise again from the ashes because our God is able to see us through no matter what we're facing and no matter what the situation looks like. We're gonna make it through that Monday. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm gonna make it through that Monday. <laughs> Listen, you already have everything that you need to make it through that Monday. Whatever that Monday may look like for you, you have everything that you need. And over this past year, as I was reflecting, the Lord kept bringing me to this same particular passage of Scripture over and over and over again. It was almost annoying. <laughs> I was like, Lord, let's move on, okay? <laughs> but he kept bringing me back to the same passage of Scripture, just revealing new facets of his truth. Isn't it awesome how he does that? How you can return to the same word over and over and receive something different from the Lord every single time? Well, that's what was happening and I kept returning to this word and the Lord revealed some very simple truths about the power of his presence when his people worship him. Today we're going to talk about worship. Today we're going to learn what it looks like to live a lifestyle of worship. Because your worship is what's going to get you through that Monday. Come on. You can make it through that Monday if you worship him on Sunday. Turn to your neighbor. Say, you can make it through your Monday if you worship him on Sunday. Meaning if I worship him today, he will lead me through my tomorrow. If I worship him today, he will lead me through tomorrow. Are you ready for that truth today? 
Listen, we're going we're gonna to pull from an example in Scripture from my favorite worship leader of all time in all of the Bible. And I bet you can't guess who it is. Come on, go ahead and guess. Go ahead and guess. David, if you just said Jesus on the south side, I mean, come on. Are you even trying? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the easiest way out, but no, Jesus is not the answer for this particular question. This particular question, the answer is King Jehoshaphat. Somebody say KJ the Great. Come on, he is the greatest worship leader of all time, and he is an amazing man of God. And we're going to dive into the word and we're going to learn some uh, truths from the example that he lived in his everyday life about what it means to live a lifestyle of worship. Are you ready for that today? Listen, I want you to get your Bibles ready. Get them pulled up to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. But before we dive in, I just want to set it up for you for just a minute, okay? And let's pray to hear from the Lord this morning. God, I thank you for this opportunity to come before you with heart wide open ready to receive the word that you have delivered for your people. I pray, Holy Spirit, that this word would be brought forth with clarity and with sound mind. I pray, Lord Jesus, that all distraction would cease in the name of Jesus right now in this moment. Across all of our locations, I pray every hindrance would be cast out. I pray, God, that nothing would stand in the way or deter us from tuning in and hearing your voice speak directly to our hearts today, Lord. Give us hearts to receive your message. Let it take deep root within us and produce a bountiful heart harvest. God, give us ears to hear your voice speak, even when it is still and small. We receive from you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so diving into 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the story of King Jehoshaphat, I want to set it up for you. This king, if you on your own time, go back and read about the life of King Jehoshaphat starting in chapter 17, you'll find that he is labeled and named as a man who did right in the eyes of the Lord. He was labeled a good king, a God-fearing king, because he made decisions and led the people of Israel in the way of the Lord. He cast out other idols. He, he, he led them in the ways that when they were doing something that was opposing what God's will was, he led them in the right direction towards the Holy Spirit. He wasn't a perfect man. He had his flaws and you can read all about those too. But at the end of the day, the word still remembers him as being good and God-fearing. And because he feared the Lord, God set him up for success in everything that he did. He was very wealthy and successful and he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And God added to the numbers of his nation. God added to the numbers of his armies so that he could be the most powerful kingdom. He could lead the most powerful kingdom here in the earth at that time. And because of this, there were three surrounding nations, enemy armies, when they saw how much favor King Jehoshaphat had with the Lord, they knew that the only way that they could come against him, the only way that they could defeat him was to join forces and come against him. All right, so we have these three surrounding nations that have decided they're going to, you know, join in their efforts, put all of their armies together because they'll be bigger and greater than King Jehoshaphat ever was, and they'll be able to, to overcome him, and they'll be able to conquer that territory. And King Jehoshaphat hears the news of their plan, and he is terrified. He is terrified. How many of you know just because you're walking with the Lord doesn't mean that you're not overwhelmed by fear when the enemy comes at you? That's real life. It's okay to be afraid. But it's how we respond to that fear that leads us to our way to victory, okay? And King Jehoshaphat, his first response was to call the entire nation to fast and to pray and to seek God. He wants to seek the Lord for his guidance on what he should do about these enemies coming against him. What a remarkable example. When was the last time that the enemy came against you and your first response was, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God today. I know the Bible tells us to do it. I know it's a simple truth that all Christians and believers have heard your entire lives. But do you actually do it? Do you actually put it into practice and see what the Lord can do? This is what King Jehoshaphat did. And because he made that decision and had that response. This is what the Lord says. We're going to pick up in chapter 20, verse 15. This is the Lord's response. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Somebody say, the battle is not mine. It's God's. 
Do you believe that today? Tomorrow, how many of you know what tomorrow is? Monday. Monday. Turn to your neighbor and say, Monday's coming. Monday's coming. Tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Stand still. And watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. O oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Say, the Lord is with me. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the clans of Koath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning, church? Are you ready to praise the Lord on the west side, church? Are you ready to praise the Lord in your living room for those tuning in online? Come on, we're going to worship the Lord this morning with a loud shout. Listen, you can make it through your Monday when you worship him on Sunday. King Jehoshaphat's first response was to bow down low in worship. But let me tell you this. Did you know that you can make it through your Thursday when you worship him on Wednesday? And did you know that you can make it through your Friday when you worship him on Thursday? Did you know that it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, that worship is meant to be a lifestyle, an everyday existence, an everyday action? So why do we worship? Why do we worship? Because Jesus is worthy. He's worthy. Period. Put a period on it. He's worthy. He's worthy. Did you know that your very existence only remains because he is your creator? Did you know that the very breath in your lungs is there because he is giving you life? Because he chooses to position you here on this earth for his purpose? He's worthy of your worship because he is your creator. Did you know that your eternal salvation only exists through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on his death and his resurrection? So many years ago, he paid the price so that you could be set free. He's worthy of your worship. He is worthy. Why do we worship? Because he is worthy. He is worthy. If you want to make it through your Monday... You need to start recognizing who he is and who we are not. Who he is is not who we are. And you need to recognize that. Worship is all about him. It's all for him. It's always been about him. And he's worthy of it, church. He's worthy. If you have him and you claim him as your Lord and Savior, your lifestyle should be one of worship in every action and behavior and attitude that you possess should bring him glory. We worship because he is worthy. King Jehoshaphat recognized who God was. If we flip back to verse 6, he says, Oh Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty and no one can stand against you. King Jehoshaphat recognized who God was and who he was not. Listen, when my babies were little, (laughs) they're so grown and it's so sad. But when they were little, even before they were born and they were still in my womb, the very first song they were ever taught The very song that I ever sang over them was Jesus Loves Me. Do you know that one? Come on, sing it with me. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know for the little ones to him be. They are weak, but he is strong. And yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Come on, sing it out, church. Yes. The Bible tells me so. Why did I not teach them twinkle, twinkle, little star? Why did I not go through every nursery rhyme in the book of Mother Goose? Jesus loves me was what was saying over them because it was affirming their identity in Christ. Hear me, church. From a very young age, from before they even left their mother's womb, my children, I was bound and determined to affirm their identity in Christ. Little ones to him belong. I belong to Jesus. They may be weak, but he is strong. I may be weak, but my God is strong. Whether they realized it or not, before they were ever even able to read the Bible on their own, they knew who God was and who they were not. They didn't realize what was being spoken over them. They didn't realize what was being saying over them. But it was an affirmation of their identity. They belong to Jesus. They are set apart and called and chosen by God and for God and for his purpose. And we, as a church, must recognize who God is and who we are not. We may be weak, but he is strong. So listen, if it's all about Jesus, why does worship grant us access to the power God has? Each week you hear me as I lead worship tell you this over and over and over again. There's power in the presence of God. If you only knew what breakthrough was on the way when you experienced the power of his presence as you press into worship, each week you hear me tell you this. But today I'm sitting here telling you it's all about Jesus. So are these conflicting messages? No. Why do we have access to the power and the presence of God? The answer is simple. We just sang about it. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. Hear me today. He wants to be in relationship with you. He wants to be close to you. In John, it says, where I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So when we come into the presence of God and we lift high the name of Jesus, he draws us in close because he desires to be in close proximity with his people. He desires to be in intimate relationship with you because he loves you fearlessly, woman of God. He loves you relentlessly, man of God. He loves you with the love that you will never find anywhere on the face of this earth it's a jealous love it's an unconditional all-encompassing never-ending love for you his people he desires to give you good gifts and he knows that when you worship When you lift him up and he draws you in close, the power of his presence fills the room. And when the power of his presence fills the room, church, darkness must flee. When the power of his presence fills the room, we can walk with authority. When the power of his presence fills the room, no weapon formed against you shall remain. When the power of his presence resides and dwells in this very room or in your car on the way to work or in your home, in your living room, when the power of God is there, with you you can do all things and the enemy will be defeated do you believe that this morning listen the first truth that king jehoshaphat led by example and what he knew to be true about worship deep in his heart is that worship is a war cry it's a war cry do you know what a war cry is a war cry is an assembly of the troops It's a gathering of the soldiers. It's a let's get everybody together. It's a when you're in the stadium and you're like, come on. That is a war cry. We are joining forces. We're coming together hand in hand. We're going against the opposition. And we will not be defeated. They're going to be beneath us. We're going to win the battle. We're going to be victorious. It's a hype moment. It's a safe. We're all on the same page. And we're moving forward. That's a war cry. 
in this passage of scripture that we just read, when Jehoshaphat fell to the ground and began to worship the Lord, notice that all of the nation joined him in worship. All of the nation joined him in worship. Don't you know that when you go through a Monday, that you don't have to go through it alone? Don't you know that when you get into the presence of God, that you are equipped by prayer warriors that are here in the same presence of God as you are? Don't you know that you don't have to face this battle on your own? He called the war cry. He gathered the troops, and then they all fought on his behalf. And some of you, maybe you're here in the room today, and you're saying, hey, I'm a single mom, and that's great and all, but I am all by myself. I'm all alone in this. I can barely make my bills. I can barely take care of these kids. I'm struggling and I'm wrestling and I need a breakthrough. Let me tell you this today. He is with you. God is with you. We read it in his word and his word is truth. His word is powerful and his word does not return void. And let me tell you this, King Jehoshaphat understood that when he called the war cry, it was not just for the soldiers that were here on this earth. It was not just for the people here in this room or on the west side or on the south side today. It was for all of heaven's armies to join with him in battle for he had already received the word that the battle was not his but God's he was calling all of heaven's armies to join him to go before him he was holding tight to that truth that had been revealed to him and he knew when he bowed down low in worship that all of angels armies are going to join him and go before him in battle and notice this posture of surrender when he bows down low and he continues to recognize who God is and who he is not. I wonder if there's any of you here facing battles today that are not meant to be yours to fight. I wonder if there's any of us in this room that could just remain in a posture of worship, that could remain in a posture of surrender, and we would see the Lord fight the battle for us. Do you ever feel like you're just throwing blows and no, nothing is being accomplished, nothing is happening on the other side of things? Maybe there's distance developing between you and your spouse because instead of remaining in a posture of surrender and a heart of worship towards the Lord, you've gone to battle on your own and you're fighting a battle that doesn't belong to you and you're causing harm and separation in your marriage because that battle belongs to the Lord. And maybe, just maybe, if we would remain in a posture of surrender, we would watch and see how the Lord would move on our behalf. Maybe, just maybe, we would see the Lord change their heart in a moment. Maybe, just maybe, he'll change our hearts and our minds. Your worship is a war cry. Let's call on all of heaven's armies. Let's join with the forces of heaven and let the Lord fight the battle. It's time to stop fighting battles that belong to the Lord. Are you with me, church? All right, let's pick it back up in verse 20. Verse 20 says this, early the next morning, who knows what tomorrow is? Monday is coming. <laughs> Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the, way to Jeho on the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me. Listen to me, church. All you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. And you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor and this is what they sang come on we're going to read this together today give thanks to the Lord his faithful love endures forever come on one more time give thanks to the Lord his faithful love endures forever come on for the west side give thanks to the Lord his faithful love endures forever on the south side let me hear you give thanks to the Lord his faithful love endures forever and at that very moment at the very moment that they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. Yeah. 
The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrives on the scene, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Don't you know that the word of the Lord will never return void? His promises are yes and amen. His word is truth. He promised that victory would be with them, and it was. Listen, you need to understand this next truth. Your worship is a weapon. Your worship is a weapon. King Jehoshaphat understood this to his core. So much so that he sent out the singers. He sent out the worshipers. Ahead of all the guys with all the armor and all the swords and all the things that could actually do damage to another human being. I don't know about you, but if I got sent out to the front line and I'm like, hello, you're going to give me like a gun or something? I don't know. <laughs> Listen. He believed in the power of worship and so much so that he was willing to put his worshipers on the front line. He understood that at the very moment they opened their mouths that the enemy would be defeated. And listen, what was the song that was in their heart? It was gratitude. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Before they ever even reached the battlefield, they didn't know what the Lord was doing while they were worshiping. They couldn't see it. They had yet to arrive to their destination. Listen to me. You don't even know the battles that the Lord is fighting for you. But when you worship, you're causing confusion among the enemies that are attacking you. When you worship, the Lord is able to move on your behalf. So worship through your Sunday so you can make it through your Monday. Let your worship be a lifestyle. And let your worship be filled with gratitude they gave thanks before ever even knowing what the Lord was going to do. They didn't know. They knew that the Lord said that they would not have to fight. Okay? That's the truth that they knew. They didn't know how it was going to happen. As far as they knew, they were still walking up to the enemy army. They didn't know what the Lord was going to do and when he was going to do it. But they gave thanks anyways. They gave thanks anyways. Jesus also led by example in this when he went to go feed the 5,000. Do you remember? What was the first thing that he did when he broke that bread? He gave thanks for what was seemingly so small and so insignificant. He gave thanks for it, and God multiplied it. And let me tell you this. Your attitude of gratitude is the pathway for your miracle, okay? When you give thanks to the Lord, he can do so much more with you than anything that you could accomplish on your own. Some of you just need that attitude adjustment today, okay? Some of y'all be in here complaining about your babies, complaining about their tempers, whining and complaining about their bad behaviors, and I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we would just shift our mindset and begin to thank God for that strong-willed child. God, I thank you for that strong will of his because I know that one day he will be able to stand firm and he will not be swayed by the things of this world. I wonder if any of us could give thanks to God for the determination in our daughter's spirit. For we know that one day she will lead her family well. Because she's determined. I wonder if we could just start giving God thanks for the things that we usually complain about. And watch him work a miracle on our behalf. I wonder if we'll see the behavior of that child start to shift. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. For what you do not have. So he can multiply it and give you more than you can ever imagine. Listen. You want to make it through your Monday with an attitude of gratitude. And the thing about gratitude is it keeps our focus and our attention upon the Lord. 
right? When we talked about recognizing who God is and who we are not, when we're thankful for what God has given us, it keeps our attention upon him and off of the things of this world. These worshipers understood that as they were gathered and joining forces on the front line, they were tasked to move forward. If they were to take their eyes off of the Lord and make it all about themselves, woe is me, I'm on the front line and I have no armor. Listen, we're about to start a new series next week on the armor of God. It's going to bless your soul. (laughs) You better invite a friend and you better get here and save yourself a seat, get here early because it's going to be incredible. But let me just let you in on this little nugget. The armor of God has no protection for your backside, okay? Nothing. You're fully exposed. Do you know why that is? Because you're meant for forward movement. Those worshipers were meant for forward movement. And when you take your eyes off of the Lord and recognizing who he is and who we are not, your focus is turned inward. All of a sudden, those worshipers would have had their backs exposed to the enemy. They would have been open for the attacks to come. So let's keep our eyes on Jesus. And with an attitude of gratitude, we're going to make it through our Monday. Amen? Amen. Let's move along as we close out this story today and and learn about this final truth. We're going to start back up in verse 27. Now remember, they have just witnessed an incredible miracle take place. The enemy army has been completely defeated, completely destroyed, and they did not have to lift a finger. They just sang. They sang a song of gratitude. Verse 27, it says this, Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, the greatest worship leader of all time. They were overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps and lyres and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. And when all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. This last truth that I want to leave you with is that your worship is a witness. They came out of that battlefield triumphant and full of joy and full of gratitude, singing and giving praise and thanks to God loudly on their instruments. They're marching through the streets, declaring their victory over the enemy. And look who took took witness. Look who took note of what God had done. The surrounding nations, they begin to fear God. Let me ask you this. When was the last time that you worship so boldly that someone else took notice? When was the last time that your life was lived in such a way to bring glory to the Lord in everything that you did that your neighbor noticed? When was the last time that your coworker saw you giving thanks to God for your lunch on your break and asked you what it was all about? When is the last time that your children have seen you worship so boldly and so loudly and so demonstratively as you do when you, your favorite team scores the touchdown? I'm just saying. <laughs> your worship is a witness. And every fiber of your being should convey what you know to be true about the God that you serve. Everything within you should live to bring him glory. Your worship is a witness. Don't you know that the Lord has a greater purpose in mind and his purpose are his plans for the expansion of his kingdom here on the earth? Don't you know that worship is not about you and what the Lord wants to accomplish through you? I wonder if there's anybody in the room that will stand up and allow the Lord to move through you in your worship in the lifestyle that you choose to live each and every day for him. Let the Lord use you, church. Don't be so selfish to hide the things of God from the world around you. God has gifted you and purposed you. He's given you breath and life. You have so much to be grateful for, even in the middle of a battle. Let your worship be a witness. Let Jesus bring others into his kingdom through the life that you live for him. 
It's time to be bold. It's time for us to stop shying away from expressing ourselves in worship. This is a simple truth. Your worship is an outward expression of an inward revelation. It's very simple. So everything that you do, every action, every word, every step that you take, everything is just an expression of an inward revelation. It's what you know to be true about the Lord that you serve. So why not live boldly for him? Our worship team hears this all the time. And if you've ever served on the choir at any special holiday, you'll hear this too. When we get on this platform, we better convey how great we know our God is, okay? If I stand here and I'm like, "Mm, to worship you I live. Are you guys going to actually believe that I live to worship Jesus when I stand there like this? To worship you, I live. To worship you. Maybe you don't even hold your hands up. Maybe you just stand there in the seats and you're like, to worship you, I live. Maybe you're just thinking about your Monday and you're like, I got a lot of stuff to do after I get out of church today. To worship you, I live. Do you think anyone is going to believe that you believe what you're singing about? Come on. Let your outward expression convey the truth of who God is in your everyday life. Let your expression be bold and confident and powerful and authoritative because that is who God is. And that is who God is in your life. Not just mine. Not just those on the platform. You have access to the same power in the presence of God as we do. And listen, your worship will not only be a witness to the unbeliever, your worship is also an encouragement to the believer sitting right at your side as John comes. Your worship is an encouragement to those around you. I can remember this time um, When we first started the church, we had this young man that was on our worship team. He served with me for a number of years until he went off to college. And through those beginning years, there was a lot of difficulties that we faced. Extreme financial hardships. Battling through what we didn't know the Lord would provide for the next day. Having to scrounge up every last bagel from Panera Bread that we got for free hauled away in a trash bag that they gave to us. Every recipe you can make with a bagel, you name it, I got it for you, okay? I can't even stand the smell of them now. But listen, the Lord, that was what the Lord provided for us. And we used it and he got us through. And I gave thanks to him for it. I was grateful for his provision. But we walked through a lot of really challenging, hard times. And this young man, he had witnessed all of the struggle that we had walked through. He had witnessed people slandering us and us standing firm, knowing that the Lord would fight that battle for us. He watched us walk through difficulties in our marriage and in our communication with one another. He watched us walk through financial hardships. A lot of very tough things and not just those things but also very real illnesses <laughs> I remember one Sunday I was sick as a dog so sick literally been puking all night I get up and I'm going into the house of the Lord and I'm just praying for a miracle that he's gonna give me the strength I need to make it through that morning to lead worship for our church and I'm literally hunched over the toilet five minutes before I have to get on the stage. Didn't know how I was going to make it through. Sucked it up, got out there, served the Lord, went straight back to the toilet. (laughs) It was a rough day. And I know some of you may think that's a little crazy and a little extreme, like just stay home. But listen, in those days, we didn't have Pastor Mickey, okay? (laughs) It was me or it was my husband, okay? So if any of y'all have ever heard my husband sing, you just know it, it wouldn't have been a good day. So <laughs> listen, the Lord prevailed. He gave me the strength to get through it. <laughs> we made it happen. But a few weeks later, this young man comes up to me and he's just watched me live out this life of worship no matter what I was facing. And I didn't even realize that he was watching me. <laughs> 
I didn't even realize that he had paid attention to all of those things. But he comes up to me and he pulls me aside after rehearsal a few weeks later because he's going through a struggle of his own. He's going through a really hard time with his family. And he's like, Pastor Ashton, I don't understand how you can still get up there on the platform and worship. Because I feel like my heart is just not in, in it. I feel like a hypocrite because of what I'm going through and what I'm facing, what I'm battling. I don't feel like my heart is in it. So how do you keep getting up there and doing that? And I turned and I looked at him and I said, because Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. No matter what I'm going through, he doesn't change. He stays the same. He's worthy of my worship. He is worthy of everything that I have. And even when I feel dry and barren, I know that even in the book of John, his word declares that doing the will of the Father is nourishment for my soul. So even when I don't feel like it, I worship anyways. Even when I'm going through a trial, I worship anyways because my God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's my creator, my redeemer, my restorer, my deliverer. And if he doesn't change, my worship doesn't change. My worship remains constant because he is constant. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. And he was so encouraged. He was so encouraged to continue pressing on in the things of the Lord, even when he didn't feel like it. And I wonder if there's any of you here in the room today that need that same encouragement to just worship your way through your Sunday so you can make it through your Monday. If you make worship your everyday lifestyle, the Lord will go before you and fight those battles. I guarantee you, you will not face as many battles as you have been facing if you would just find yourself in a posture of surrender to the Lord. Allow your worship to remain constant. Constant. Live a life that worships the Lord. As we close today, the last and final verse of this incredible story and this incredible example of the greatest worship leader of all time it says that Jehoshaphat's kingdom, in verse 30, Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side. Don't you know that when the presence of the Lord fills the room, it's not just powerful. It doesn't just give you access to his power. It also gives you access to his peace. His peace. He is the lion and the lamb. He is all powerful and he is our comforter. And I wonder if there's anybody in the room today that just needs a touch of God's peace in your life. Maybe you have yet to see the victory that the Lord has promised you and you just need his peace. Maybe there's some of you that have not yet experienced that peace because you're not walking with the Lord. Maybe you need to get yourself into a relationship with Jesus so that you can be granted access to his power and to his peace. Would you stand to your feet all over the room today and at all of our locations? Let's just lift up our hands for 30 seconds in a posture of worship, in a posture of surrender. Let's just press into his presence here in this room. He is already here with us. Where two or three are gathered, there he will be also. So he is here with you. His word declares that he is with you. His word declares that you will have victory over the enemy. So let's press into his presence right here in this moment. Lift your hands, lift your voice, lift up your hearts, lift up a song of gratitude, lift up a song of thanksgiving to our God. He is more than able to see you through to the other side. So start thanking him in advance for the victory. Start thanking him in advance for the breakthrough. Start thanking him in advance for the healing. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, for who you are, Lord. We recognize your greatness. We recognize your power. We recognize your authority, Lord. And we bow low, we bow low to worship you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all over this room and at all of our locations at the sound of my voice if you are here today and you're one that I was just speaking about that has not yet been granted access to the power and the peace of God because you are not in right relationship with Jesus now is your moment now is your opportunity now is the moment to receive all that the lord wants to provide access to you for now is your moment will you grab a hold of it if that's you today and you say i desire to commit my life to jesus if that's you today and you say i am longing for god's peace and the power of his presence but i need to get my heart in alignment with who he is. If today you are ready to fully commit to walking in relationship with our Lord, with every head bowed low and every eye closed at all of our locations, no one moving, no one stirring, no one talking, no one shuffling. Let all the distractions lay aside. If you are here today and you are ready to commit your life fully every day, walking in relationship, walking hand in hand with the Jesus that we just spoke about. I want to give you the opportunity to do so in this moment. And if that's you today, let's go ahead and lift our hands and hold your hand high. Hold your hand high. Thank you, Jesus. Keep it held up. Our host, if you're here at one of our physical locations, they're going to be bringing to you a little white card. Keep your hand held high until they put it in your hand. Keep your hand held high. If you're joining us online today, you can type in the comments, I'm giving my life to Jesus, and our team will follow up with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, God. For the sake of those who just raised their hands and made that choice to commit their lives to Jesus, can we pray this prayer all together? Dear Lord, I'm so grateful for who you are. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to join in relationship with you. Today, I commit my life fully to walking with you. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I recognize your death on the cross. I recognize your resurrection from the grave. And I put my life in your hands. Fill me with the power of your presence. Grant me the peace that only you can bring. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we get our hands together and celebrate all those that are walking with Jesus in this moment? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the expansion of your kingdom.